Hi everyone, this is Gail with Pretty Presets and today I just wanted to make a quick video with a little bit of information on the new update that Lightroom released and maybe to answer some of your questions that you might have. So first of all, Lightroom, in case you weren't aware, released a big update um, last week and there are some really wonderful features in it. So I don't want you to be afraid of it. There are some changes, however, and some things look differently. And I think there have been some people who are confused about where to find some of these, some of their old functionality with this new update. So let's just start by making sure you're in the develop module. And the biggest changes happen right here in the toolbar. So this toolbar looks significantly different. All the icons look different and it actually looks like there are some tools missing. For instance, my brush and my radial filter and my linear gradient filter are no longer there. So let's just cover where everything is then. So here's our crop tool. This is the same functionality as before, but the icon looks different. If I click on it, you can see that my, I can still crop just like I could before. The same tool panel opens. All of this is very familiar. It should be. This little band-aid is now the cloning and healing tool. And the functionality, again, is still the same, but the icon looks different. This icon looks a little bit similar, but it isn't a tool I use all of that much. So I don't know how much you guys use it, but similar as before. Here's where the big difference lies. We haven't really had something that looks like this. It, looked, it looks a little bit like what some of the other tools were. But as we open it here, we can see that there are lots of tools inside this box that we click on. Now, the ones that you're looking for that have similar um, functionality as the previous ones are right here in the middle. We have the brush, we have the linear gradient, which was previously the graduated filter. We have a radial gradient, which was previously the radial filter. And these are going to work almost exactly the same as the previous tools. There is going to be a new box that pops up. So if I, I don't have any brushes or anything on this, if I click on the brush tool here, you're going to see that I get this new masking panel that opens up. Here, the panel, the tool panel actually looks really similar. This top portion used to be down at the bottom, but it's now up here at the top. Okay, here, this effect right here, here's where we choose which of our tools we want to apply using our brush. So let's just say I'm gonna come down here and choose add light and I can brush over my people a little bit roughly. And now you can see this white portion is where I just brushed. That's what's showing here in the mask. And there are some options here. You can use this eyeball to turn anything on and off. If you click here, you can rename it, which is actually kind of nice, um, especially if it's an image where you're doing lots of brushing and sometimes it gets really confusing trying to select the different brushes. Now I can actually just select um, by clicking here and I don't have to worry about these pins as much which is nice. You still can select using the pins, but you can also select just using this mask, this mask box over here. You have the ability to add or subtract from that, sel that selection, that mask, and those are nice features. Instead of going back over here to now click on this and choose what I wanna do, I just can click this create new mask, big plus sign right up here at the top. And I can come down here and choose linear gradient Okay, I can drag however I want this to look. And again, I can choose whatever filter from my brushes and filter tools that I want. Purple sky is probably not what I wanna choose, but there we go. 
You can see up here in the mask that wherever there is white, that's where it's showing the most. And then it gradually goes down to here where it's black and it's not showing at all. And it works the same. You can still move these around. You can still rotate by clicking on that middle line. All of it's still the same. The little icon is no longer a circle. It's now a square. It doesn't really make a big difference to me what shape it is, but that is different. Now, if I want to click up here and choose create new mask, I can come down here and choose a radial gradient and then just drag it however I want it. Um, really similar tools down here. I can come down here and let's say I want to choose um, correct orange red. This is going to do some weird stuff. <laughs> Actually, it didn't do it that much weird. But you can see up here in my mask icon, um, you can see where it's being applied. So at the center um, is where this is going to be being applied and it's gradually falling off towards the edges. So this should look fairly familiar. These are pretty, pretty similar to how the functionality that they've had before. So another question that we've been getting is what about the, if I upgrade and I have done brushing and filters and stuff like that before, are those still going to be there? So let's click over on another image here. This is an image that I've done some work to before. And you can see up here that this mask panel just automatically opened and you can see where my masks were before. Um, these were filters. Um, this was a brush. And if I click on it, you can see that I was just brushing a little bit in her armpit right there. So everything that I did before is still there. And you can just click on these masks to select it. Um, or click on any of the icons that were there. You can see this last mask down here is was just some adjusting that I did to her eyes, probably um, using the eye and teeth whitener. I do that often. So anything that you've done before is still going to be there. And it's going to show up here in this mask panel, which is going to open automatically, but you can also click over here to to access that as well now something i can also show you about this new mask panel um, you can minimize it or make it bigger you can move it if i wanted to just have it automatically pop up like all the other panels i can just move it and it will automatically click and just remain there i can pull it back out or I can move it wherever I want, honestly. So it can be moved around and put where you think it makes the most sense for you. Okay, so let's talk about what the new tools are. So my favorite new tool um, or set of new tools are both of these select subject and select sky. So I'm going to click here on this. I just clicked with the plus sign, create new mask, and I'm going to click select subject. And it's going to take a little second here to do this. And you can see that now it has created this mask over just the subject. It didn't include this little part here. You can see it's a really perfect selection, which is really nice. It didn't you know, select this part here. And anything that's masked, I can apply a filter to. So let's say I've got my, let's come over here and let's just select, um, let's select Healthy Glow. Let's see what that does. And anything I, I do with these sliders over here only affects my subject, which is super nice. This, that would have taken me a, a little bit to brush over all of that, to make sure I wasn't selecting the background, and, and there's no way I would have been able to include 
you know, just these little tiny hairs and not hit the background. So super nice feature. So one thing I do want to show you is that you may think, okay, well, does it do that well, even if the background isn't as plain as this background? Because this background is fairly plain. It doesn't have tons and tons of texture. So let's try this, that other photo that we had up. And I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click create new mask. And I'm going to click select subject. And let's just see how it does. I mean, isn't that kind of like magic? There's no way I could have brushed that perfectly over my subjects. And now I can come over here. It's showing red because I haven't done anything to it. But if I come over here and choose like, um, let's come down here. The Enchanted Garden ones, like maybe add light. You can see that I can brighten or darken my subjects. And look, it's really done a nice job with that selection. Now, there is even more magic, and I want to show you the even more magic. So with this same selection where I just selected my subject, you're gonna see I have some options over here. I showed you these before. You can rename the mask, you can intersect the mask. I can't go over all of this right now, but we will. We'll have blog posts and videos with all of this stuff up eventually. So just hold tight and we'll give you more clarity on what that is. But the feature I want to show you is when I hover over this subject, it's kind of like this sub box down here. It's the box under the box. And I click on these three dots and I come over here. I have some options again, but I'm going to click invert. And you're going to see that now everything I'm applying, I'm only applying to the background. Look, my mask, still you can see my little family there, but they're now masked out and all my changes are being applied just to the background, which is super nice. What if I wanted to darken my background just a little bit? I could create a new mask and have just my subject selected again, and I can have different masks where I'm making changes just to my subject, and then I can have a different mask where I'm making changes just to my background. You guys, this is really game changing. It's workflow changing. It is so time saving because before I would have had to do all of this brushing or filters or whatever to try to make these changes. And now I can do them really, really quickly. And I still have access to all of my brushes and filters over here, and I can apply those to my subjects or to my backgrounds, whatever I want to do. So really, these features are fantastic. Now I want to show you one more. I'm going to come over here. I have an image that has a sky, and I perfectly chose a sky that um, was not perfect. It's not like a perfect line. It's cut these trees. It's tricky. So, and I've actually already done this, but I'm going to come up here. I'm going to click new mask. I'm going to collect select sky this time. And let's just see what happens. Oh my gosh, it just selected only my sky. And not only is it just all around these little tiny parts here, but it selected this area right here and these and here and here. It's just an incredible selection. So I could now come over here and apply any of my filters or brushes or anything that I would want to apply to that or to any of these. Let's try add drama. And I really don't think it'll do that much because this sky is pretty blown out. But I can now play around and enhance um, my sky in ways that I it would have taken me a long time to do that before. So really nice features. I just, I can't say enough about this, the addition of these tools. I think they're really going to make a big difference for users. So hopefully 
if you've gotten a little more clarity, you feel a little more comfortable about where the tools are and what they look like and how they work. And please just stay tuned here. We'll have more videos, we'll have more tutorials, we'll have more blog posts up about these features even more in depth. So thank you for being here and thank you for listening and hopefully this helps you feel a little more comfortable with what Lightroom's added in the last week. Have a nice night.